Good morning, friends. I am again G. S. Suresh, Professor in Civil Engineering, NIA, is in front of you to teach you further chapters on design of RCC structural elements 10 CV 52. For the previous classes, I had engaged on the following concepts. I had taught you limit state method. I said it is a probabilistic method that is the mathematical method. And I told you that the structure should withstand the ultimate load and should also satisfy serviceability requirement such as deflection, cracking and vibration. And I had also told you that the resistance in which I calculate the resistance as mu times r should be greater than the summation of lambda i and l i, where mu and lambda are partial safety factors. Mu is less than z 1 and lambda is less than or sorry it is greater than 1. We make the summation for dead load, live load, wind load, earthquake load etcetera. In the serviceability, we calculate the deflection by the length as less than or equal to 1 by alpha, where alpha is an integer number generally taken as 250 and L is the span. In limit state method, I had defined what is the characteristic load and what is characteristic strength. The 95 percent of the time, the characteristic load should be safe load greater than the actual load. The strength should be 95 percent the safe strength such that the structure will not collapse. And I had defined partial safety factor that is used to get the design parameters that is the design load and the design strength. I had shown you a video on the two point loading in which in the initial stage before the concrete cracks, the stress strain curve is linear and no crack appears on the structure. After the concrete cracks, the stress strain curve is non-linear. Further increase in load after cracking makes more cracks to appear on the surface which are called as flexural cracks and later at the ultimate the shear cracks also appear. This was witnessed by you in the video I had demonstrated. If the steel quantity is less than required for a balanced section, the section is called under reinforced in which the crack further propagates and the concrete fails due to compression. This is called as secondary compression. A balance section is the one in which the stress in concrete and the steel attains their ultimate value simultaneously that is called as the balanced section. In the over reinforced section wherein the reinforcement required is more than that of the balance section causes the compressive stress or compressive strain to reach their ultimate value before the steel reaches. This is a brittle failure and dangerous. IS 456-2000 stipulates that no structure should be designed as over reinforced section. I had told you in the last class that never design a beam with more number of steel than required. People have a tendency to put more steel thinking that putting the steel will make the structure more stronger that is not true. The objective of today's class is to teach you 
some of the design equations for which I require to tell you what is a stress block is and what are its parameters and how to calculate the flexural strength of singly reinforced rectangular sections under ultimate force or moment. So, today I am continuing the unit 2 that is principles of limit state design and ultimate strength of RC section. In the last class I had shown you in this unit how the member behaves under ultimate load. There are few fundamental things I have to tell you. Those are all like definitions. Here I have shown you concrete is a composite material made out of cement, aggregate, water and admixture. The basic requirement of the concrete is it should have good workability that means ease to mix and place in the forum work is called workability. It should have good strength, it should not deteriorate quickly, it should be durable and at the same time it should be economy that means it should be economical. Friends already in concrete technology you have studied what is cement. Cement is a product which is blended by crushing the raw materials adding sometimes puzzlona or not and few chemicals to retard. We call it as ordinary Portland cement. They are available in market in three numbers 33, 43 and 53 grade. This number indicates what is the 28th day mortar cube strength made out of the cement. There are other types of cements rapid hardening, slag, puzzlona and the content of the cement stipulated by IS 456 should range 300 to 450 kg per meter cube. You should not add too much of cement. It induces more cracks due to shrinkage. Hence, the IS 456 stipulation should be followed. To make the concrete, we require the main contribution for strength is from aggregate. Two types of aggregates you have studied. One is the fine aggregate that is sand. Sand may be naturally available or man-made and coarse aggregate is the aggregate nothing but the crushed stone which is most important ingredient to contribute the strength to the concrete. This constitutes both coarse and fine aggregate to about 60 to 80 percent more the fine aggregate you put it becomes more workable, but it may reduce the strength. To mix the cement and aggregate we require water. If you put optimum water the strength of the concrete will be high. If you put more con water in the concrete the concrete strength reduces. You must have observed in concrete technology a curve showing a declination of the strength with increase in the water cement ratio. In order to make the concrete to have less water and more workable, we use chemicals called as admixtures. They are used for to improve the workability strength. Sometimes cement itself will have some mineral admixtures like fly ash, silica fumes and we may add externally also like rice husk ash, metacoline and the slag furnace or the furnace slag. 
as i have told you several times we use cubes to determine the concrete strength on the 28th day after you add the water to concrete it gradually increases and on the 28th day it has been found to be almost reaching its ultimate value on the strength there will be some increase in strength after that also but that will be very small over years it improves the characteristic strength of concrete is indicated by the grade of concrete the grade of concrete is indicated by m followed by an integer number which indicates the 28th day strength of concrete very often people do mix up the grade of cement and grade of concrete i caution you never mix it the cement grade is 33 43 and 53 whereas the strength of the concrete we start from 10 then it is 15 20 etc 10 and 15 are not recommended for reinforced concrete they are only for plain concrete used as a leveling course this number 10 15 or 20 indicates the 28 day strength of the concrete cube generally we use m20 concrete for all the structural elements up to about m55 they are called as ordinary concrete or standard concrete above m55 that is from m60 onwards they are called as high strength concrete is 456 states that never use the concrete for reinforced concrete less than m20 we have to test at least 4 cubes for every 5 meter cube of concrete we have casted to check their strength in the previous class i had told you what is the acceptance criteria given by the code it states like this the mean value of the concrete what you have obtained is fcm should be greater than or equal to fck plus 0.825 times sigma or fck whichever is greater and the strength of individual test should never be less than fck minus 4 i had given an example in the last class for m20 concrete the range should be between 16 to 24 this diagram shows what is the stress strain curve of a hardened concrete in the first diagram here you can show how the initial stress strain curve will be almost linear you can check here and later depending on the strength they deviate non linearly and they will fall down after it reaches the ultimate value for different grade of concrete the stress strain diagram is shown here this is the second diagram is a typical stress strain curve for concrete here we indicate for a brittle material two types of ngs modulus or modulus we call it as e if you draw a tangent at the initial that is at the origin to the curve here as shown and the slope of this is called as tangent modulus initial tangent modulus ec and if you take any point on the curve and draw a tangent and if you join that point to the origin the slope of this line is called secant modulus and this is called tangent modulus at a given point 
generally the point A is selected such that it is having a stress equal to 50 percent of the ultimate strength. And the value of E C given by the Indian standard code 456 states that E C should be equal to 5000 root F C K. This is in mega Pascal that or Newton per mm square. And other property which often we say is ignored is the tensile strength. It is about 10 to 20 percent of the compressive strength. The flexural test or the split tensile strength is conducted in the laboratory to calculate indirectly the tensile strength. In the earlier days, we used to conduct what is called as briquette test on the mortar to find the compressive strength, but that was found to be not correct and we have introduced these two tests. Here you can see a cylinder of diameter 150 mm and length 300 mm is placed horizontally like this and the load is applied through a compression testing machine. So, that a tensile strength or the splitting tension is developed along this plane and the cylinder breaks using our formula derived to you in strength of materials we can calculate the tensile strength of this. Another test conducted in the laboratory is cast a plain concrete beam like this of length L and apply two point load at one third of the span and subject it to breaking. It is a brittle breaking suddenly it breaks from bending strength formula for homogeneous material calculate the tensile strength as F is equal to M by Z, Z is the section modulus. The code states that in the absence of the test you can take based on the characteristic strength of the concrete that is the cube strength you can take it as 0.7 times root F C K. This is denoted as cracking strength F C R that is called the tensile strength of concrete. Now, let us also study another material which is steel. The steel is a well known material the man has made. It is manufactured in a factory under a very good control. So, it has got a very good behavior as a homogeneous material and we use for our structure in the form of bar circular bars. I often call this as rebars in my future classes you have to understood that it is the steel bars. This induces ductility. Ductility is the ability of a material to stretch to maximum extent before it fails. It is strong in both compression and tension. Up to about 1960 plain mild steel bars were famous. We, we used to call it as MS bars, but this bar do not have a good bond between the concrete and the steel. Hence, we used to provide hooks at the edges. Still, this bar strength was not high. Its characteristic strength is about 250 MPa. Whereas, after 60s people started using what is called as high strength deformed bars indicated as HYSD bars. These bars were either cold or hot twisted and it used to induce more strength to the steel and they were called as high strength or high yield strength bars HYSD bars. If it is cold twisted it is getting the terminology as CTD bars. Nowadays 
this concept has been taken over by thermomechanically treated bars. You must have seen many advertisement on the bars like TMT, thermomechanically treated bars. In this, no twisting is done. The concrete, sorry, the steel which is under molten state is made to form the bar and then suddenly it is cooled. This induces high strength to the steel. This is called as quenching. It is done in a special bed and at that time the ribs are formed on the top in a mold. These bars are now popular and very commonly used in almost all structures and CTD bars are outdated now. The advantage of thermomechanically treated bar is it has got more percentage of elongation when compared to CTD bars, but the strength is same whether it is a TMT bar or it is a CTD bar, we use the same strength. The strengths available in the market are 450 MPa, this is the yield strength. You must have studied this in your basic material testing lab. When you do a test on steel which do not have a definite yield point, we take 0.2 percent proof stress. This proof stress value is 415, 500 and 550. These three are available in market, but 550 MPa is very rare and in 550 if you get the bar, only you get a smaller diameter bars. Popularly used bar strength is 415 and 500. This is the typical stress strain curve for mild steel bar, you can check this here, the, it is straight line up to yielding, then it will have a upper and lower yield points C and D, then you have a plastic zone, it reaches ultimate value at E and then at, it breaks at F. The dotted line shows the true stress strain diagram. The slope of this straight line is called Young's modulus E s, which I take it as 200 GPa or 2 into 10 to the power of 5 MPa or Newton per mm square. The code says that you take a elastoplastic curve for mild steel, up to here it is straight line, then it is a flat with Fy equal to 250 Newton per mm square. In the previous class, I had told you the partial safety factor for the steel is 1.15. If I divide it by 1.15, I get 217.39 which is the design strength. This is the characteristic strength, this is the design strength. So, this is how you get the design curve and I have indicated here what is the E s value. And if you test the CTD bars or TMT bars, it does not have definite yield point. So, you take 0.2 percent stress, that is at 0.002 strain, you draw a line parallel to the initial straight line curve, where it touches the curve at 4, that strength is called as yield strength. This is the curve given in IS 456 for the CTD bars. This that first one indicates the actual stress strain curve, this indicates the design strength where Fy is divided by the material safety factor 1.15. Before we understand the design concept of RCC, we shall study the assumptions we make. In the earlier class, I told you we are going to make idealization. The three dimension structure is treated as either a single line diagram or a two line diagram which is called as plane frames. Similar to that, we have some idealization in reinforced concrete also. 
the first and foremost assumption we make is the section will not lose its cross section. If it is rectangle, it remains rectangle after bending. That means, plane section remains plane after bending. This is called as Bernoulli's assumption. This was taught you in strength of materials when we teach you on the flexure or bending stresses in beams. The second assumption is the maximum strain in concrete is 0 0.0035. Strain friends is equal to change in length divided by original length. As I have been telling you several times, the third assumption is the tensile strength of concrete is ignored. The design curve already I have shown you for concrete and steel was given in IS 456 2000. To ensure the maximum ductility, the strain in tension reinforcement shall be taken as 0.002 that is the point where we assume the material to become plastic or it loses its linear behavior plus F y divided by 1.15 into E s. E s is Young's modulus, F y is its characteristic strength. We assume perfect bond between concrete and steel. These are all the curve which I have already shown you. This is given in IS 456. A stress diagram written across the cross section is called stress block. I will go to the board and tell you how we create the stress block. Friends, you can see I have shown you the stress strain curve for the concrete to be having initially straight line and then it becomes non-linear and it becomes constant over here. The strain here is in x axis and the stress is in y axis. So, at 0 value this is the one at some value and at this point it is 0 0.002 or 0.2 percent. So, now if I take a rectangular section and if I draw the strain diagram, the strain diagram will have compression on the top and tension at the bottom. I will only concentrate in the compression zone where the compressive stress occurs and tensile stress in the tension zone is ignored. So, if I take the 0 strain that corresponds to this point, if I take a point where it is 0 0.002 that corresponds to this point, if I write now the stress variation, the stress diagram, if I write the vertical line for the datum, the stress is 0 at this point and it parabolically goes up to 0 0.002. At this point, we assume the stress to be 0 0.45 or 446 F C K. So, then it becomes straight line. After this, the straight line is taken like this and this is 0 0.45 fck this how the stress across the depth of the beam is written and this is called as stress block i hope i am clear on what is a stress block is it is nothing but the diagram written across the depth in the compression zone this zone is compression zone and this is called neutral axis and this is compression and this is tension. So, 
I hope there is no confusion in the concept on stress block. Let us try to understand what is the stress block, how to calculate the forces using the stress block. I will again try to recall you, whenever I tell you the stress multiplied by respective area I get the force. What is the definition of the stress? It is load by area or force by area. So, if you want to get the force, you multiply the stress by area, you get the force. So, here I am explaining you about the stress diagram across the depth in compression zone up to neutral axis is called stress block. The person who is responsible for giving the stress block is Hognestead. He introduced the concept of stress block. He gave a parabolic curve like what I have shown you in the diagram on the board. But Whitney is another scientist who worked on concrete said it becomes difficult to work on parabola. Let me give a rectangular block which will give the same effect as that of the parabola. Most of the country code use what is called as equivalent rectangular stress block. But Indian code uses the stress block which I have shown you on the board that is initially parabolic and then it is straight line. This is the stress block which I was talking to you. The one which I have shown you on the board is similar to this. This is the rectangular beam. There are three bars which I call it as AST area of steel. The overall depth here I indicate as D and the depth from compression to the tension is the distance called as effective depth and this distance is called effective cover. The strain diagram at the time of failure will be 0 0.0035 in the concrete and 0.002 plus 0.87 Fy by E s in case of steel or in the tension zone. So, we have now here a stress block in which I have written 0.446 here and rounded off to 0.45 on the board and this is a straight line portion and this is the parabolic portion. The depth from the compression zone to the neutral axis is called as neutral axis depth and if it is maximum that is in the balance section we call it as x u max or x u limit. The total force in the compression zone is denoted by C and this is acting at a depth of 0.42 x u as the resultant force. Now, let us try to work out the different parameters here. I have shown you the strain diagram in which the depth of the neutral axis is x u. This curved portion parabola will have a depth 0.57 x u and the straight line portion is 0.43 x u. I will derive these two in the next slide and the x bar is the centroid of this stress block wherein the force acts C u and I use three parameters here. I call this 0.45 on the top of the stress block as k 3 and k 1 k 2 into f c k into x u into b as the total force. k 1 k 2 into f c k gives you the stress, x u gives you x u into b as the area, stress into area gives you the total force. So, let us now try to derive this, you use the strain diagram, apply the method of similar triangles. The one triangle is having a base point 0.035 and the depth is x u. 
and you have another triangle with the base point not not two and the height is x 1 this height is x 1. So, compare these two and apply the principles of similar triangle. What is the principle of similar triangle? The ratio of base to height should be same. So, the outer triangle ba ratio is the base is 0 0.0035 and the height is x u. That of the small triangle the base is 0 0.002 and the height is x 1. From this if you work out you get x 1 equal to 0.57 x u. So, if you deduct from x u this 0.57 you get x 2 as 0.43 x u that is what I have shown you in this diagram this height is x, x 2 equal to 0.43 x 1 equal to 0.57. Then let us try to calculate the total area of the stress block a equal to a 1 plus a 2. So, that means, you have the two portions in the stress block as area number 1, area number 2. This area a 1 is the area of a parabola. You must have already used this formula in your engineering mechanics for finding the centroid of a parabola that is 2 thirds into base of the parabola into height. So, that is 2 thirds into 0.45 f c k is the area of this into 0.57 x u gives you 0.17 f c k into x u. Here there is a term x u this you should not consider there is a mistake in this this is only 0.57 x u. Then you a 2 as I have shown here no x u is here this is correct 0.45 f c k into 0.43 x u gives you 0.1935 x u. Add the 2 you get 0.3645 f c k into x u this is the area of the stress block. Then by using the principles of centroid I write the centroid distance from the compression zone or extreme fiber as summation of area of each portion 1 and 2 into its distance to the top divided by total area. So, first area into the distance of the parabola is 3 eighth of 0.57 x u plus 0.43 x u which is missing here plus a 2 into 0.43 x u by 2 divided by total area gives you 0.43 x u. Comparing the above results with the stress block shown in figure I can write k 1 equal to 0.45 k 2 equal to 0.42 and k 3 equal to 0.3645 divided by the 0.45 that is k 1 gives you k 1 k 3 is the multiplying factors. So, I get 0.81. Very often in the examination you are asked to derive the parameters of a stress block. So, you have to derive the value of k 1, k 2 and k 3. Then in the initial stage when we apply the load the concrete is to crack the moment responsible for cracking is called cracking moment. Before it cracks the concrete is a homogeneous material along with the steel because unless the member cracks the steel will not take any tensile stress. So, we can use the elastic formula m c r equal to f c r into i by y. So, where i t and y t represents the moment of inertia and distance to the extreme fiber. f c r is called as modulus of rupture and earlier I showed you the code says it is 0 0.7 root f c k. Let us now try to derive the formula for 
the moment of resistance. For that I consider a simply supported beam subjected to any type of loading. This is not a UDL, this is to show here that it is a general loading I have indicated like this. We have a rectangular section with base width B and effective depth D, area of steel AST and this is the neutral axis. The depth of the neutral axis from compression zone is XU and the strain diagram is same which I have told you earlier and the stress block is same. The additional one what I have written here is the tensile force generated in steel at ultimate. I call it as Tu. The internal couple generated by Cu and Tu is called moment of resistance. The internal resistance developed to the external bending moment is called as moment of resistance. For horizontal equilibrium, if you put sigma h equal to 0 or sigma f x equal to 0, you get that C u is equal to T u. That means total compressive force should be equal to total tensile force. That is how internally the equilibrium is generated. The external ultimate moment is calculated as C u into z or T u into z. So, if you go back over here, C u is the force, what is moment of a couple? Force into perpendicular distance, force you can take either C u or T u both are same, C u into z or T u into z gives the internal moment and this internal moment is called as ultimate moment of resistance. From the stress block parameters, I know that the total area is 0.36 Fck into B into Xu is the compressive force. What is the tensile stress in steel? It is the yield stress divided by the partial safety factor for the steel which is 1.15. 1 by 1.15 gives you 0.87 multiplied by Fy gives the design strength. And this if you multiply by the area of steel, stress into area gives you the force Tu. Tu is equal to 0.87 Fy into AST. And for equilibrium, we should have Cu equal to Tu. So, if you do that, you get Xu is equal to 0.87 by 0.36 Fy into AST Fck B in the denominator. So, if you divide 0.87 by 0.36, you get that value as 2.14. So, once you know the area of steel, you can calculate the depth of the neutral axis from the previous equation. The internal moment can be obtained by using the equilibrium equation which is well known to you as sigma m equal to 0 which I call it as m u equal to m u r ultimate moment of resistance is given by this equation C u into z or T u into z. So, 0.36 F c k into b into x u into z or 0.87 F y a s t is T u into z the lever arm z is d minus 0.42 x u. How did you get this? Friends see here, the overall depth is effective depth d and the centroidal depth is for the stress block is 0.42 x u. So, this distance is total distance d minus this distance is 0.42 x u. That is how you got the z value. So, now, we will try to derive the formula for the moment of resistance for different failure condition which I told you earlier. What are the modes of failure I had told you? It is balance section, under reinforced section, over reinforced section. For the balance section, the strain in concrete 
and strain in steel reaches their ultimate value simultaneously. The steel quantity is such that this happens, but very difficult to create it is only an imaginary section. So, we start with this and I give the value of the depth of the neutral axis as x u max or sometimes I call it as x u lim that is limit and the other depth of strain diagram is d minus x u max. The strain in steel is 0.002 plus 0.875 f y divided by E s. From the strain diagram I can get the value of x u max I do not need any stress. I can only use the strain and calculate the limiting neutral axis depth which is given by 0.0035 divided by 0.0055 plus 0.87 fy. From this equation you can clearly understand there is no term which involves the strength of the concrete. The depth of the neutral axis depends on the steel. Why? Because this equation 1 has got only two values variables f y that is the characteristic strength of steel and Young's modulus of steel. So, for different grade of steel the clause 38.1 in page 70 of the code IS 456 2000 gives you the limitation on the neutral axis depth to effective depth as given here. If you are having mild steel this depth is 0.53 that is for balance section 415 it is 0 0.48 for 500 0.46. So, this number is a magic number which I tell you we keep on using in our calculation particularly 0 0.48 and 46 maximum I use is F e 4 and 5. So, never forget the value of x u max or x u lim by d as 0 0.48. So, from equilibrium condition for balance section I can write C u equal to T u for horizontal equilibrium from which I get the area of steel divided by B d equal to x u max by d into 0 0.36 f c k by 0 0.87 f y from this formula I got. So, what I have done here is I have taken A s t max by B and multiplied in the denominator by D on both the sides. So, that is why I have got D D here if you cancel this you will get this formula only. So, on both the sides I have divided by D and I call this A s t by B D area of steel divided by area of concrete which is effective that is effective depth is used is called percentage of steel. I say that I am using 1 percent steel means I am having the A s t by B d into 100 equal to 1 percent. So, friends I have derived the formula for the P t max here which is x u max by d which is equal to the percentage of steel getting 0.414 f c k by f y. I call this as limiting steel that is the maximum steel you can use f y by f c k which is equal to 0.414 x u max by d. The ultimate moment of resistance I will calculate using this formula where q lim is equal to 0.36 f c k which is the factor used here for m u is equal to q lim into b d squared. How did I get this? I get it from c u into z that is the force into z and for c u I use the formula for the area of stress block into area of concrete where I get 0.36 f c k x u lim into b into z is d minus 0.42 x u lim and if I take out the constants other than b d squared I get it as q lim. So, it is called as moment of resistance factor in balance section and which is given by 0.36 f c k x u lim by d and 1 minus 0.42 x u lim by d in the bracket which gives the value of q lim. Based on the quant the 
quality of steel and concrete or grade of steel and concrete are given a table for M20 concrete and Fe415 QLIM is 2.76. This is another magic number always you remember. So, in the balance section I call the ratio of MU lim by FCK BD squared as a factor given by this equation and this is given in a special publication 16 what should be the value of MU lim by FCK BD squared. So, the other types of failure I will take it up in the next class that is under reinforced and over reinforced section. So, I will come to all this in the next class. Now, I make the summary of what I taught to you today. We take the compressive strength of the concrete on the 28th day as the standard strength because it ceases at that point and we use 150 size cubes and we take the tensile strength as 10 to 20 percent of compressive strength. The code gives FCR equal to 0.7 root FCK and the limit state concept is probability I have told you many times. The types of steel used is CTD or TMT bars and uh, very well I have told all this in the beginning of the class and I have also defined what is balance section, under reinforced section and over reinforced section. That is all for today friends, tomorrow we will meet and have more on the design aspects. Good day. Thank you.